Whether you're stepping on stage to compete or just trying to build a more attractive physique, nobody can resist the allure of an aesthetic set of biceps. We've all spent hours upon hours working on our arms, yet most of us aren't happy with the results we're getting. Why is that? The issue lies in where our focus is. There's only one main way to make your biceps stand out, and that's to make them thicker. There's no better feeling than when you begin to fill out shirts for the first time with your biceps bulging through the seams. Thicker biceps are not only more visually appealing from the side, but you really notice the difference from the front. This thickness adds a layer of density to your physique that will definitely cause some heads to turn. That being said, the biceps are a fairly small muscle group and are actually a good bit smaller than the triceps on the other side. This means that if you really want your biceps to stand out, you have to be very calculated and direct with your approach. No more aimlessly throwing around dumbbells or ending your workout with a few sets of curls. It's time to take your biceps to the next level. In the beginning, pulling heavier and heavier weight while including a few sets of curls at the end of your workout will suffice. However, as you get further into your training career, the way you approach your biceps training has to become a bit more calculated. If you want to build thicker biceps that bust through your shirt sleeves, there are a few things that have to happen. For starters, you've got to understand the anatomy of the biceps and their functions and more importantly, how you can train those functions under load to elicit the most amount of muscle growth from your training. Second, once you've got your two to three key movements, focus on progression. If you're performing the right exercises using proper form and gradually increasing the load, your biceps will grow. In this video, I want to briefly go over the basic anatomy of the biceps and their functions, and then I want to go over what are, in my opinion, the best six biceps exercises for building thicker arms. The anatomy of the biceps. The biceps are a muscle group located in the upper arm and, as the name suggests, divided into two heads. A short head, located on the inside of the arm closer to the body, and the long head, which sits on the outside of the arm further away from the body. Both heads originate on the scapula and both heads converge to insert into the forearm. Often overlooked when talking about arm anatomy is a muscle known as the brachialis. The brachialis is vital when it comes to thickness from the front and is normally extremely well developed and visible on most professional bodybuilders. The brachialis sits just lateral to the biceps between them and the triceps. Now that you know what muscles you're looking to target, what exactly do they do? The main function of the biceps is elbow flexion, essentially bringing your lower arm towards your shoulder. As both heads attach to the scapula, there's also an element of shoulder flexion, particularly from the long head of the biceps. The short head also aids in supination, rotation of the forearm and hand to turn your palm upward. However, when it comes to elbow flexion, believe it or not, this is where the brachialis really comes into play. The brachialis is the strongest of all elbow flexors. This functional anatomy is vital when it comes to knowing how to train your biceps and brachialis effectively. Now that you understand what muscles you're targeting and what functions they're responsible for, I'm going to give you my top 6 exercises for building thicker biceps. First, let's talk about the long head of the biceps. Because it crosses the shoulder joint, placing the forearm behind the body puts an extra stretch on this head of the biceps. In one study, published in the Journal of Sports Science and Medicine, they found that placing the biceps in 50 degrees of shoulder extension elicits the highest activation in the long head throughout the range of motion. Which brings me to exercise number one, incline dumbbell curl. To ensure the emphasis of the movement falls on the long head of the biceps and off of the anterior delt, the elbow needs to stay fixed until the biceps are through the mid-range at 90 degrees of elbow flexion. A common error I often see is people initiating the movement from the shoulder joint. The elbow has to start from a fully extended position while moving only the forearm for the initial part of the movement. 
It is only after this that the elbows can come forward slightly to fully contract the biceps. Keep in mind, both heads of the biceps will be active here due to the exercise focusing on elbow flexion, but the element of shoulder extension places the emphasis on the long head. Exercise number two, behind the body cable curl. From the previous study, it's quite clear that the long head of the biceps are more active when the shoulder is extended. The behind the body cable curl is essentially a unilateral cable curl where the shoulder is extended. The best part about using a cable instead of a dumbbell is that the cable provides a more complete resistance curve and places the biceps under constant tension. And although we're not sure how much hypertrophy that'll translate into, it's certainly something to keep in mind. Like the incline dumbbell curl, it's important to start from a fully extended elbow position and to allow your elbows to drift behind your body. Remember, the greater degree of shoulder extension you're in, the more emphasis you place on the long head. Next, let's move on to the short head of the biceps. When it comes to the short head of the biceps, it seems to be that exercises with a higher degree of shoulder flexion challenge it more. Now, this would mean that something like a chin-up would be a great biceps builder, which it is due to the high degree of shoulder flexion, but most people do chin-ups on their back days anyways. That being said, there are another two exercises I recommend for adding mass to the short head. Dumbbell Spider Curls As mentioned earlier, the short head of the biceps have two main functions, elbow flexion and supination of the forearm, and is most active when in a degree of shoulder flexion. Not only does the spider curl start with the arm in a degree of shoulder flexion, it also allows for a large degree of supination to occur at the forearm. Another great thing about this exercise is that it's very difficult to cheat, forcing you to keep tension on the target muscle. Pro tip, hold the dumbbell right at the edge with your thumb and index finger touching the bottom of the dumbbell. This will force your hand into a larger degree of pronation, meaning you'll have to actively supinate, which will lead to higher activation in the short head of the biceps. Preacher Curl the preacher curl not only starts you off in a degree of shoulder flexion, but also allows you to get the biceps into a very short position at the top. On top of this, we also know that the biceps are fast twitch dominant, meaning they will respond to training under heavier loads. So don't be afraid to load these if you can. There's also a strong body of literature to show that increased load is directly correlated to increased muscle activation in a given area. Pro tip, use dumbbells instead of a barbell. Start with your biceps in a neutral position and supinate to get a full contraction of the short head of the biceps. Lastly, let's talk about the brachialis. When it comes to the brachialis, there's one thing that really helps it grow, load. The brachialis, being the strongest elbow flexor, is best targeted with heavy loads using some sort of neutral or pronated grip. Which brings me to exercise number five, dumbbell hammer curls. The dumbbell hammer curl is a simple and easy to overload exercise. And if you've ever reached failure with standard dumbbell curls, you know you can always bang out a few more reps of hammer curls to finish. This is due to the brachialis being stronger than the biceps themselves. Pro tip, avoid shrugging your shoulders to get the weight up. Instead, keep the shoulders back and down and try to move nothing other than the elbows. This will ensure that the brachialis are bearing most of the load while also helping to avoid injury. Reverse Easy Bar Curl Research seems to show that the higher degree of pronation you get into, the more the biceps shut off and instead the brachialis elicits more activity. The Easy Bar, allowing for a nice middle ground between full pronation and a neutral grip, gives us the best of both worlds, more isolation of the muscle and a chance to load it a bit more. In my experience, Going with a thumbless grip seems to help feel it more in the brachialis and less in the brachioradialis, another muscle of the elbow flexor group. So now you know the exercises I recommend for bringing up each area of the biceps. 
The last thing to cover is how to program your arm training for optimal results. As I mentioned earlier, if you're new to training, gradually getting stronger with your pulling movements and including some curls at the end of your workout will suffice. Once you've built a solid foundation, however, it's time to get a bit more intentional with your training. For some, they'll find that the long head is well developed while the short head lags behind. Those individuals will benefit from including biceps exercises where the arms are in front of the body while also including supination to those movements. Others are more short head dominant and will want to focus their efforts on bringing up the long head by including more biceps exercises where their arms are behind the body. And then, of course, those genetically gifted individuals whose biceps grow proportionately with nothing more than some chin-ups and dumbbell curls. Knowing which group you fall into will help determine what exercises should become the focal point of your biceps training. When it comes to training frequency, there seems to be a clear body of literature that suggests training a muscle group more than once per week is beneficial. When it comes to your biceps, Personally, I'd suggest training them two to three times per week depending on the split you're currently running. As the biceps are a mix of fast twitch and slow twitch fibers, I recommend training in all rep ranges with a slight emphasis on the lower rep ranges or 6 to 10 to elicit maximum growth. Given the exercises mentioned, a training day for your biceps might look something like this. If your short head is lagging. Dumbbell Preacher Curl, 3 sets, 6 to 10 reps. Reverse Easy Bar Curl, 3 sets, 8 reps. Spider Curl, 2 sets, 8 to 12 reps. If your long head is lagging. Incline Dumbbell Curl, 3 sets, 6 to 10 reps. Dumbbell Hammer Curl, 3 sets, 8 reps. Behind the Body Cable Curl, 2 sets, 8 to 12 reps. But then again, this is all dependent on which parts of your biceps need more work. If both heads are lagging, you probably haven't maximized the newbie gains that come from nothing more than heavy chin-ups and barbell curls. And if you're one of the few genetically gifted individuals whose biceps grow symmetrically, you probably won't need to change much. Are you struggling to build thicker, more well-rounded triceps? Click the like button below if you'd like me to make the triceps version of this video. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.